the next of index software testing. Uh, this is the lecture ten. Uh, this is in continuation of uh, the embedded uh, development life cycle and uh, testing life cycle and uh, different types of uh, life cycle uh, like V model, uh, multiple V model, after V model, etc. So, in earlier session, we studied about uh, V life cycle. Uh, what are the, what are the entry and exit criteria that needs to be understood, and uh, what is the dependency? How it's going to enter? How it's going to exit? And uh, we also studied about uh, two types: prototyping life cycle and formal life cycle. And uh, example of prototype uh, life cycle uh, we studied. Just uh, glance through the session what we had. Uh, in the earlier class, this is an example of prototype life cycle having entry and exit as a finalized prototype with the finalized SRS DD source code test testing aspects, which is enough for going for the formal life cycle. A formal life cycle, we know that it is a V shape, why because uh, on the left hand side we have finalized requirements or specification then we have a design next to that then we have a coding and then in parallel to that the various aspects of testing are being carried out for specification is a high level testing for design is integration for coding it is code or unit testing so that is why it is called V model. As part of the exercise that we do for testing of this level produce the test result. So that is a formal life cycle after we are done with the example after we are done with the prototyping. So this is another way of depicting the V model life cycle. Uh, each life cycle elements have its own process like the process has process have to be having a objectives, scope, entry, inputs, outputs, and exits defined for each of the process that we follow uh, life cycle. And in another session, we understood about uh, each of these process uh, items. Taking an example of a test plan where we identify objective to prepare a text plan, scope is for the project, preparing the acceptance testing, then entry we do with a high level requirement specification, then project plan also is taken care, then we have the inputs as SRS project plan, outputs as a baseline the test plan and traceability. Exit is a, uh, the outcome of the testing what we do. Preparation is that this plan is a outcome along with the traceability report. Also, we went through uh, consumer electronics product life cycle example, and we defined a sample uh, chart, rather a general entry and exit criteria uh, for embedded software testing. So testing life cycle we studied it, taking an example of automotive testing, uh, system requirements, study, test planning, test execution and uh, defect management which also involves a test automation, package release, package and release then the test conclusion or the test closure. So each one uh, these five phases have its own process, each of them uh, we studied about uh, its objective scope, entry, inputs, outputs, and uh, exit. I will not go through in detail because I have gone through this in detail. As it is applicable in the future, we can not use this. This is uh, taking an example of automatic test process how they follow for testing the embedded software. Also, we studied about some of the embedded software. Software words 
we will touch base this again and again and which cars so that uh, we are aware of this so also we had a few questions as exercises so that is about the previous session now we will uh, with that background we will go through the next session okay we know that uh, we model life cycle uh, how it is once we have uh, laid out a uh, v model life cycle there is another variant of uh, v model life cycle that is called the multiple v model life cycle why this is required what is the importance of this okay so the essence of uh, multiple v model is that uh, different physical versions of the same system are developed it means uh, you take an example uh, prototype we might have a uh, prototype 1 2 3 etc so it's a uh, different versions or different uh, feature wise uh, products as a prototype we will have developed each one possessing uh, the same required functionality in principle that is the minimum functionality has to be there actually because uh, the end product of what we are going to develop is the same but there will be a multiple variants uh, versions in terms of it's a physical outcome this means uh, for instance that the complete functionality can be tested for the model as well as for the prototype and the final product on the other hand certain detailed technical properties cannot be tested very well on the model and must be tested on the prototype that means uh, the end uh, once we finalize the end model we may not be able to test on some of the uh, technical uh, elements of that product so we may have to go for doing testing on the prototype itself for instance the impact of environmental conditions can be uh, can best be tested uh, on the final product but we don't have to do it or uh, we may not be able to do the environmental condition completely on the product so likewise we have a uh, scalable or incremental way of uh, having uh, the model uh, I used the testing the different physical versions of uh, require uh, this product requires specific techniques and specific test environment we know that different uh, prototypes will have a different environment uh, i mean deviated uh, slightly or uh, as per the need therefore a clear uh, relation of this to the multiple v model and the various test environments so the system is developed as a sequence of uh, several sub systems development that become more real in the end so we have a sub systems it's called multiple physical versions it is called sub systems usually these are model prototype and final product it could be anything what we develop so the multiple v model based on the well known model it's also called spinner or two cogon is a development model that means uh, though it is called as a um, what is that called uh, life cycle elements so, requirement design coding testing all together it is called as a development model uh, the, the fundamental uh, multiple model uh, is based on the v model in principle so each of the product appears product appearance follows a complete v development cycle including design code test activities and the component that means uh, we have a different variants of the prototype developed as a multiple v cycle so that is why it is called as multiple v model this is uh, typically used in uh, production environment where uh, they uh, may not be able to conclude on the uh, final end product uh, or they might not have designed uh, in such a way that uh, one go they will uh, develop the final product what they do is they will first identify the basic v model in that again they will identify sub system uh, v models so all these sub system v model comprise uh, into multiple v model life cycle so this is a master plan sort of thing we will definitely study about a master test plan uh, maybe in the next session okay so this figure uh, you can see how it looks like model v development uh, life cycle we know that we have studied one v in the earlier session it could be for a model or it could be for a prototype or it's for a form formal one so each one has a design source code development and build 
and testing design build test design build test so you can see three v's here three v models one is a small one and the medium bigger one so it doesn't mean that it is a uh, same actually it can have a, a different aspects like we might we might have a detail design or Low level algorithms and all the stuff taken care in the bigger one, and the smaller one may not need it. Again, depends on the what sort of a development we are going to adopt. So, basically, the model or the initial prototype will have a smaller OP model and cycle, whereas the prototype will have mixed. So, I have put yes in that book, it is mentioned as yes. Why? Because uh, there could be multiple prototypes. Having a feature set, feature set one in the first prototype, and first prototype having a feature set one, second one having a feature set two, third one could be having a feature set one plus some changes, or you can call it as set three. Both could be having feature one, two, three, partially, etc. So all this can be there part of the prototype. So we can add the multiple like this. So I just draw. So in between, it can have a multiple. We models uh, uh, before we draw on the final product so that is the meaning of this multiple view model I uh, again tell that it will be having a uh, uh, multiple uh, development life cycle defined for each of the uh, variants like we have an initial prototype defined as a model uh, it is off and work uh, basically before we find a new feature set prototypes or something like we the users will develop a proof of concept application or the feature like feature set 1, 2, 3 etc and accordingly we will have a life cycle for that also. All this together we will try a bigger V model that is as a final product or a formal V life cycle we can call. So this also can be part of a Usually this will be part of the master plan. You can call this as a one single view, having multiple views. That's why it's called multiple view model. Okay. So in multiple view model life cycle. Uh, we have a testing activities defined below, which basically divided into three categories. Uh, they are uh, test techniques, test levels, and types, and other issues. Test techniques, test level, uh, and types, and other issues. So these three categories basically. We divide the V model test activities. Each is then put in one or more V's at the relevant stage of it. That means basically we will identify all these categories, then we will apply into each of these. So that is how it has been done for this cycle. So we will study about each of these three categories. So you can see this table, uh, techniques, test levels, types, other issues. Uh, this is actually this uh, whatever I am referring on this model, V model, multiple model, and in the next uh, slides I have uh, nested V models. These are all basically derived uh, from the 
testing a mail software uh, book by Bart Blockman and uh, Edwin uh, Nordbom uh, because there are several techniques and several other techniques that are available. But uh, this is a book that is being referred for this uh, course, embedded software testing here. Okay, so test related activities and the issue issues that need to be allocated throughout the development and testing life cycle. What are those? Uh, here, development uh, testing very interesting. Development also can be having some of these tests because developers as a tester uh, is very important for embedded software testing. I will explain that in a second slide. Uh, developer as a tester, uh, how it is. Techniques. So, what are the techniques that we have uh, uh, that should be considered for multiple view model? And this specific to multiple view model. Uh, code coverage analysis, control flow testing. Okay. Uh, flag and inspection, failure mode, and effective analysis is also called as FM, fault injection. Fault analysis, formal verification, interface testing, model checking, rotation testing, random testing, rare event testing, simulation, state transition testing, statistical research testing. This, these are the techniques that are used or can be considered. Uh, it need not be all, some of this uh, based on its applicability. And uh, corresponding test level for types uh, where they can be applied. Uh, for example, uh, code coverage analysis can be applied for design verification, control flow testing, code review. So there is a term called uh, Control flow. It's not be clear. So change the color. For control flow and data flow, so some of the very important uh, items that we need to be knowing for embedded software testing uh, in order to understand. Control flow is basically the, uh, the controlling of the or the the way how the program is controlled, the image software product is getting controlled in terms of the logic or flowing down the uh, entire system. Data flow is where uh, the parameters of the data, how it is getting flowed down uh, throughout the structure. So, Fagan inspection it is a type of uh, inspection method, maybe I will. Uh, we will discuss this uh, some detail uh, later. For conformance test, uh, we follow this. Uh, FMEA for our design verification. Fault injection, uh, where we have integration, we, we inject uh, signal errors or any data errors in terms of uh, system. And we, we do the integration. Similarly, FTA fault analysis. This involves the host of problem. Here, what we do is uh, uh, we do an analysis of the fault. So, what is the root cause uh, of uh, a particular fault? Uh, so, where it's going to hit. That means, if I inject an uh, error, where and all is going to impact. This, this, that uh, needs to be analyzed. So, again, it's the requirement. Uh, definitely, requirement will take care of uh, the fault, uh, fault uh, recovery, and uh, Fault detection and recovery mechanism. Uh, all this will uh, all those aspects will be tested in terms of uh, fault analysis. Formal verification, model integration test, interface testing, uh, field test. Then we have a model checking with validation test, requirements verification, software acceptance test, integration system acceptance, system integration, unit test. So these are some of the test levels uh, or types. So based on the Type of product that we use, these uh, test levels types corresponding to the techniques we can use it. And uh, we have other issues as third category architectural design, certification, detailed design, detailed test plan, 
design and build tools design and build simulator design and build stubs i will explain about stubs in a little design and build drivers design for testability this is one of the very important uh, thing that uh, now almost all industries they are following especially product uh, product companies like samsung uh, uh in the design phase so they will identify the testability part that means whether this design can be tested so without that testability uh design is not complete or uh, design will not have full proof mechanism so they need to have some sort of a design which will support or help in testing it could be test hooks or it could be a test uh, stubs or drivers or a test monitor whatever it is and of course we have a high level requirements technical requirements low level requirements master test plan uh, we will touch base master test plan later production requirements release criteria as well so this is uh, the third category so uh, this is a complete master list of three categories uh, this uh, are need to be considered before we take up the multiple view model Uh, those techniques, uh, levels, and other issues can fit into any of this. I mean, so basically, they, we need to draw a picture uh, uh, when we do the V model, uh, multiple V model planning. All this have to be considered. So that is the main thing about uh, multiple V model. So now we consider only the first one model. multiple v model applicability for uh, uh, model that means uh, what are this this is an example out of this uh, how much we can draw for the model so that is nothing but allocation is called allocation of test related issues on the development question of the model so low level requirements in verification detailed design verification design for testability so all this will be on the left hand side So, as i said the v model is looking like a v shape and uh, corresponding to these uh, requirements we have this criteria we have a integration model integration we have a conformance test we have a test these are the some of the selected uh, techniques test level types and other issues so for this so what is the outcome like we have a simulation we have a rare testing state transition testing model testing these are some of the activities similarly on the left hand side we do a fmea fta form inspection file inspection so this is falling outside the wheel uh, on par with the model so this is the applicability how we are going to draw this on this master table okay uh another uh, one is uh, v model applicability for uh, prototype uh, what are the categories that we can uh, use for uh, prototyping uh, v model here again uh, outside the v we have a techniques in terms of uh, fmea fpa fan inspection code review uh, within the v we have all well well forms detailed design plus verification requirements design for testability then on the right hand side we have unit test at the bottom host uh, target based testing we have software integration software acceptance then we have hardware software integration then we have system integration then we have the package and release uh, on the right hand side so this can go for uh, multiple uh, uh, testing based on that so bug fix and all that with the help of integration testing and also we as a result of that uh, we come up with the coverage analysis it means uh, how much we are uh, covered what is left out what is pay, what is passed what is failed etc as part of the code coverage analysis statistical uh, usage testing mutation testing fault mutation and testing rare event interface testing simulation state transition testing control flow control so this 
on the right hand side is all uh, about uh, the techniques what we apply for this prototype this is an example of uh, prototype uh, V model uh, when it comes under rapid variability under the multiple V model life cycle. Uh, final product the formal product uh, how we can apply the multiple view model product requirements that means end product requirements detailed design uh, and the, because we code and all we already taken care in the prototype so final product we leave with only the requirements and the design and uh, in terms of releasing or deploying the product into the uh, customer we have a release criteria acceptance and all that. Certification is important, if especially the products are going to be fitted in terms of safety aspects. That needs to be taken care of certification. Like we have DOMs and it be from designated authority from Airbus or Boeing. Automotive, we have autos are also. On par with this certification process, and in terms of the techniques, statistical testing, random testing. So this will be applied before we complete the V model. This is allocation for final product or the formal product applicability. So that is about multiple V model where we have. Uh, initial prototype, prototype, final product have been organized into multiple models, each one having design, code, test, design, code, test, and uh, uh, finally we are going to have the final or the formal product. And its applicability is that on a master list of techniques, test levels, types, and other issues. Okay. The next one is nested multiple V model. We have studied about a V model, we have studied about a multiple V model, then another term called nested multiple V model. The name itself tells the multiple models are nested basically. Definition is here. When the V model at the system level is combined with the multiple V model at the component level, it results in the so called nested multiple V model. So, the meaning is that system level we have a V model, it is combined with multiple V model. We have seen the previous slide having a, a prototype, final, and before prototype, we have shell. So, once this is combined, uh, at the component level, so we have defined the system level. The component level is multiple models which will come iterate. So it is so called nested multiple V model. So we have an example here. You can see this is a multiple V model one, multiple V model two, n, etc. So component one, component two, component n. This is nested under the one V model. So this is an example of how one example of taking a a component as a multiple V model at the component level. So parallel development is also called as parallel development V model. So okay, in conclusion of that. Uh, the nested uh, V nested multiple V model, all test related activities and issues can be allocated to the correct level in the correct place. That means, uh, whatever we identify in terms of testing activities should be applied for the particular level, like component one, component two, component three specific tests will be applicable for that specific uh, V, whatever we have followed with that multiple V model. So, at the system level, higher level test issues can be allocated. Overall uh, development life cycle. Uh, this is one more figure. Figure three point seven, I think. Okay.
we have seen a parallel development uh, in terms of e model component 1 2 3 etc all down uh, when it comes to nested multiple v model at the system level uh, test related activities uh, can be allocated to the correct level they are for this actually you can see in the bottom detailed test plan legal requirements design and build tools simulator stuff etc all this will be underneath that means this is common same thing is going to be applied for v model 1 v model 2 v model 3 so as an example 3 v can see that each v at a system level or component level is appropriate three times you can see so high level test issues so in the called multiple v model as an example is taken care of that means we have a master test plan safety plan we have a release applicable for all this as a bigger v model so when it comes to the individual v model this portion is taken care of in a nested manner same thing is depicted in a simpler way here this figure 3.6 uh, the multiple v model components put together when it comes to high level test uh, the common uh, line is drawn basically so the multiple v model uh, with the three sequential v cycles uh, what you are saying does not take into account the the practice or the functional decomposition of the operating system the development of such a system starts followed by an architectural design phase where it is determined which components hardware or software are required to realize this and those components are then developed separately and finally integrated into a full system in fact the simple v model can be applied to this development process at a high level the left side of the v model handles the decomposition of the system into its components the middle part of the v model consists of parallel development cycles what we have seen now here of all the components the right side of the v model handles the integration of the components so i repeat this uh, the left hand side of the v model handles the composition of the system into various components as we said uh, high level requirements design low level design coding etc the middle part of the v model consists of the, uh, the development cycles so like uh, we have a prototype so 1 2 3 4 our components parallelly getting developed In the right hand side, we are going to have a validation or integration of all activities, all these uh, aspects. Uh, so this principle uh, can be repeated for components that are too big or too complex to develop as one entity. Uh, for such a component, uh, an architectural design activity is carried out to determine uh, which subcomponents are required. Uh, we need to have a architectural design, so that will again to show how many sub components sub components are required to make the system working. So it, this also could result in uh, another uh, V model. Uh, within the V model, we can have uh, another V model. So that is why it is called as a nested V model. okay so the uh, multiple v model is not only helpful uh, when it is uh, has to be planned and executed for a, a, a completely product, but also in the case of real business of an uh, kind product so in fact the development uh, project for a product is about uh, the new release of just a few components then the multiple v model and the full or the master plan related to the development of the complete product can help to identify the relevant test activities so basically 
when we have a complex or a bigger systems what we do is we go with the parallel development of different v faces and as i said on the left hand side we have divided basically into components we have different cases into multiple components so the middle part will identify the cycle for each of these components and the right hand side we will have the integration i'll just type it so on the left hand side of the optical or nested view model what we have is both the decomposition into subsystems or components the middle part we have the parallel development cycles of each of the component for each of the each components on the other side we have the integration of all these subsystems components so that is the significance of multiple view model in context with the listing so basically this is used in bigger or complex systems where we have numerous features identified for numerous components so that is the significance of multiple view models applicability in terms of nested nature okay uh, having understood uh, this parallel different types and uh, their activities categorized now we move into the testing aspects uh, irrespective of whoever uh, whatever the model we follow etc so we know that uh, host and target uh, are available for both the test team as well as the development team so now taking into consideration how testing can be done by developers how testing can be done by independent test team and uh, there are a few principles so that we need to go through we will go through in the end okay testing by developers so we know that uh, systems are developed by larger teams sometimes divided into the teams into multiple uh, allocated uh, subsystem teams or it could be physically separated we know that uh, bigger systems or complex systems like far embed systems or aerospace embed systems are not developed at one site it will be geographically geographically separated though they have a interconnection and all that the team the testing environment or the components or the uh, you know lab and all that will be separated so the developed systems are uh, large and complex and uh, that alone uh, puts quality under pressure that means uh, all should work in tandem make sure that uh, they work for the quality and the end result uh, that is intended for the product the demand for the quality is increasing the cost the competitive market or uh, the use of systems safety critical systems so two aspects one is a uh, competitive market because uh, there are several developers or developers available so we need to come up with a good quality also there is a safety aspects uh, taken care so uh, in order to avoid all these things uh, at a later stage so better to do a testing little thoroughly 
in the starting stage or the beginning stage. So beginning stage we know that there will not be any testing or formal testing though there are test plans and all that. So the best way to do is testing done by developers. So that is the background of why testing we need to have it by the developer. So what are those? The existence of an independent test team does not mean that testing during the development stage is less important. That means it is equally important to have a testing done at the development time. Both teams have their own important role in the preparation of an end product with the desired quality. It means so they have their own role uh, testing team, the independent test team. Whereas the developers as a tester have their own uh, responsibility. So the end product should be having a high quality. That is the desired goal. An independent test team in general executes tests based on the requirements. And their purpose is to provide confidence that the system will be those requirements. So they go by what you have specified, what the product is supposed to do, what you have documented, what you have specified in the requirements. They just go by that. Whereas in contrast to that, the developers start testing at unit level because they are very near to the unit and they are the owners of the unit because they have developed because simply they own it and they are uh, having the knowledge that means they know about the infrastructure of the software. This knowledge is used again to test the integration of the different units with the purpose of delivering a stable system. So what they make sure is they develop the unit or the piece of software and since they are knowledgeable they use the same test bench or the develop or debug environment to test it in terms of unit level or in terms of integration to, to address two things one is the quality so that there are no bugs creeped unknowingly. Second thing is the system that they developed should be stable. So those two purposes are uh, attained uh, with the help of what doing the testing at the early stage. So that is why we need to have a testing by developers in the early stage of the development. So continuation uh, reasons why testing by developers is important. Early detected the defects are uh, in general the cost of fixing defects will rise in time. We know that uh, we have seen a chart where the cost rises as we go deep into the product before we release the product. So we cannot afford to have bugs or issues at the end stage. So expensive. High quality basic elements make it easier to establish a high quality system. That means the basic elements you put it right in the beginning only. So the end product, the whole product will come good. Low quality basic elements on the other hand to an unreliable system and this can't be solved practically by functional tests. It means you would have creeped some quality issues small 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 into different elements in the beginning. In the end it is very difficult to test it some of the bugs that got introduced because of the low quality during the development. Effects detected during post development stages are difficult to trace back to source. As I said, we cannot afford to have small, small defects during the development stage. It's very difficult to trace it back. So, better to identify in the beginning one. Defects detected during the post development stages have to be corrected, and this will lead to time consuming regression test. That means we need to have a regression again and again because. Uh, the fixes that have been done on the product have again need to be tested. Good testing during development stage has a positive influence on the total project time. That means we have the confidence, we have the predictability, reliability, etc. done in the end stage because of the good testing we have done in the development stage. State testing of exception handling is only possible at the level. Where exceptions can be triggered individually. I will tell about exception and interrupts sometime in the later stages because this is a new system development world. 
uh, you may call it as an interrupt uh, as a result of exception. The exceptions are somewhat uh, unknown behavior of the system under certain conditions. Uh, at the unit level or the source level, it may be difficult at a later stage so better to fix it in development. Okay. It may not be possible uh, uh, quickly to do it uh, testing as well as uh, fixing at a later stage. So that is why we need to have uh, some sort of testing uh, done at the development of the product. That means uh, basically quality uh, may not be or uh, cannot be added uh, to the product at the end by testing. It should be built in right from the start. Checking the quality at every development stage is uh, very much necessary. So how we can do is by testing. So testing is uh, not pursued by any developer who is not the rewarding task during development. That means developers uh, have seen uh, ignoring. Uh, the test aspects they will never care about the testing aspects. So the emphasis is uh, to have a testing uh, thinking, testing the thoughts while doing the development. So to keep the test effort uh, for developers on the of the level is a good practice. It should be effective and uh, efficient. To do this, uh, an integration strategy should be chosen. That is, development also will have some sort of integration strategy. Integration strategies are uh, we can uh, uh, we have anyway we've seen the some of the integration strategies are there. And maybe we can uh, go through that again uh, sometime in the next sessions. So essentially, all uh, activities have to be planned and should be controlled. So that is the form of uh, testing by development stage. Testing at development stage. Okay. Now testing by independent testing. We all know that uh, testing is an important aspect. Uh, there needs to be a testing plan, testing procedures, capability getting done by a separate team. We have a test plan also. So we'll just uh, go through that. Uh, what are those testing by independent testing? Independent teams are mostly occupied with high level tests. As I said, they go by the high level test. Having uh, requirements or specification identified as important. These tests occur at the end of the development test life cycle. We know that development life cycle is uh, uh, getting closer, the testing activity will start. The test activities of these teams are of the critical part of the development process. That means it's very uh, important uh, element in the critical path. It's an critical part, it's a Item that is under the critical path of the whole life cycle. The supporting activities have the objective of keeping the time needed to for testing execution, test execution to a minimum. It means uh, whatever the supporting activities we need to have, uh, they have the objective of keeping the time needed for test execution to a minimum. That means uh, when we are doing the development, uh, we identify the test activities and planning. So we do small test hooks and all that as a support. Uh, the objective is uh, we will have a predictable uh, time how much it is needed for test execution uh, at least a minimum uh, how much it is needed for each of the tests. So that is the uh, uh, that is the uh, idea behind uh, supporting activities. Supporting activities are kept outside the critical path by executing them in parallel with the development. As I said, uh, support activities like test books development, identifying uh, the strategies in parallel to development are all taken care as a separate activity uh, supportively for development as well as testing. So, this will not be a critical path, but it is used while uh, testing execution or actual testing is happening. Uh, which is under critical path. Formal life cycle for independent testing. Basically, what are the life cycle items or phases for independent testing? Is explained here. Uh, 
planning and control phase we have preparation phase uh, we have specification execution completion uh, this is basically of different phases that is been mentioned here uh, these are all mapping to what we have discussed in uh, earlier classes other way uh, but uh, in terms of formal life cycle for independent testing uh, taking uh, requirements as a input and doing the high level test is they have to plan and control they have to prepare they have to specify they need to execute and complete it so these are the phases uh, that are used for independent testing okay uh, this is basically a formal uh, what is described here uh, because here this involves so many components including the test management and uh, development uh, lead also will be involved because he needs to know what works what we need to fix so what is the test how it is getting uh, uh, passed or failed so most of the information needed by the test team should be provided from outside the test team that means whatever they need on the product should be provided and uh, each stakeholder have uh, its own objective and and expectations as a testing sometimes uh, the outcome of the test process is uh, subject to an external audit that means uh, there is a separate audit uh, that is taken care against what is being specified so there is a audit uh, team or the independent team uh, who does uh, audit on test team also is an important thing actually i think i can mention this independent uh, activity to audit the adherence process against what is specified in plan or specification of the test aspects so this audit can happen on any aspects of the life cycle it can happen on the test management audit can be done on the test management development team and their activities quality etc don't get confused with the audit and the quality quality is a, a different thing audit is a different thing so these are some of the formal lecture aspects that are used okay so that is about uh, testing by all papers testing by independent team now we will uh, move on to 10 principles of ml software i think i will take up this in the next session as we are running out of this session so i will uh, go through the words which we have done before as well as today so we model a couple of words i would like to add control flow data flow then what is that we have is audit so anything is uh, needed we can add it test harness test bed test bench at model based testing test of driver fault detection mcdc test hook boot software boot loader input output icd breakpoint simulator emulator phase profile data sheet data ice insert to emulator test equipment code checker static analysis then the hooks this is the reverse engineering we have life cycle entry and exit criteria baseline prototyping stakeholder 
view model control flow data flow audit anything that uh, we want to highlight we can do it I think uh, we are taking care of all this V model we have listed out. Okay. So that is about some of the words. Why these words are going through each session is to have this in mind as a tester so that we will not forget this will be part and parcel of the embed software tester. That's why it is important to have this. Okay, so we have a, a couple of questions for this session. What are the differences between V model versus nested V model, multiple V model? So, the total difference between a V model, a multiple V model, and a nested V model. What is the significance of nested V model? So, why we need it? So, we have discussed about this. Please answer uh, these questions. So that is about uh, this session. Next session uh, we will see the next aspects of uh, software testing.